Today, we're going to be looking at some weird creatures. Like, are these even from our planet kind of weird? Some of them are newly discovered, proving that there's still a lot left on Earth to uncover. Others may have been here longer than us, but just don't quite look like they belong. Better buckle up as we check out these 20 shocking creatures that are not from this planet. The Powerful Shrimp Punch you definitely don't want to mix this shrimp up with the kind you'd serve at a cocktail party. In fact, it technically isn't a shrimp at all. Scientifically speaking, the mantis shrimp is neither shrimp nor mantis, but a shrimp-like crustacean in the same family as lobsters and crabs. Considered that they actually eat crabs every once in a while, does that count as a form of cannibalism? This species measures up to 10 centimeters, about 4 inches long, but man, can they pack a punch their club-like hands can move 23 meters per second and create 150 newtons of force per punch. In other terms, that's a speed over 50 miles per hour with nearly enough destructive power to blow things up. But why does something that tiny need an attack so powerful? And how can it withstand the strength of its own force? Researchers dove in for some answers to those questions and came up with a few possible answers. For one, the mantis shrimp has an impact-resistant nanoparticle coating that allows it to punch without feeling the impact. That sure would be handy in a fight. Apparently, the coating absorbs most of the painful impact and the shrimp feels practically nothing at all. Mantis shrimp can use this power like a spring-loaded jackhammer to pounce on their hard-bodied prey and destroy crab or snail shells. Humans have even started using this information to create their own similar substance. Maybe sometime soon we'll have gloves that can punch like this shrimp. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Don't turn away from your screen just yet. Today's missing topic might just be a bit extreme, but it definitely feels like something out of this world. We can't be too sure of what this creature is supposed to be, but it does have a lot of distinguishing features to go off of. The easiest term to describe it would have to be a hybrid humunculus or a combination of animals in the form of a smaller human. The creature has very human-like hair, hands and feet, but the tail and posture of a rodent-looking animal. Going along with its snout-like nose, we can say that the creature looks to be a fusion of a human woman and either a rat or something similar. But what would it take to create a living being like this? Could it be a naturally born creature that was discovered and never revealed until now? Of course, the more likely explanation is that it's just a Halloween hoax or a prop for some kind of show. But what do you guys think? Is this a new animal subspecies? A science experiment gone wrong? or just some science fiction being blasted as the real deal? Tell us your thoughts and share your evidence with the hashtag missing topic in the comments below. Let's get to the bottom of this mystery. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Creepy barnacles. No, this isn't footage from an upcoming horror flick or some kind of strange prop, but an actual living creature that some people have been calling a monster of the deep this strangely shaped mass of a creature became a viral sensation when it mashed up on the shores of Murawai Beach in New Zealand. No one could even tell what it was at first. The first woman who posted pictures of it on Facebook thought she had found a weird wriggling beached whale. Experts have come in and corrected the finders, saying it most likely is a massive piece of driftwood covered in lesser known species called gooseneck barnacles. One person on the scene stated, it's got a putrid smell when you're downwind and when you look closely it looks like wiggling worms. Gooseneck barnacles are filter feeding crustaceans that tend to stick themselves to whatever they can find in the water. Rocks, debris, even ships sometimes, and they almost always come in big numbers. The problem with these barnacles making their attachment is that they can never be unattached without harm. They produce a cement-like substance that keeps them glued to whatever the surface is that they land on, and in this case, it brought them onto a sun-cooked beach. The putrid smell mentioned before is likely coming from their decomposing bodies. Hopefully by now it's cleaned up and cleared out so that the beachgoers can get back to enjoying their view. Hiding in plain sight. If we're gonna be honest, most bugs look like they aren't from this planet. This next one looks like an alien tried to camouflage as both an insect and a leaf and just couldn't make up its mind. The Philium giganteum, or giant leaf insect, is a subspecies of a subspecies, as it belongs to a specific type of leaf bug that also belongs to the stick bugs family. Is that confusing enough yet? 
Their bodies are wide and long and if you haven't noticed, look exactly like a leaf. They spend most of the day staying perfectly still, avoiding all conflicts like a normal leaf would. During the night is when they move around and gather their nourishment. Their diet mostly sticks to bramble, oak and roses. Does it count as eating vegetarian if you look like a plant? Well, hopefully it won't be appetizing to you if you like the way it looks because believe it or not, the giant leaf insect is the largest of its kind and can also be brought home as a pet. Just make sure you don't accidentally jump in a pile of them. That would be quite a terrifying scene. But if you do want a leaf bug as a pet, these ones might be a bit hard to find. The only place we know where they live naturally is in Malaysia and their whole species held in captivity has only been female so far. It's still a bit unclear what role the male species play in their development, but if you do take one in, maybe you can be the first to find out. The Magnificent Frigate Bird Don't pop that balloon, mostly because it's not a balloon, but the Magnificent Frigate Bird filling up that throat pouch. And yes, that's its official name. But the magnificent frigate bird has also been called the pirate bird, condor of the oceans, and man o' war bird because of its looks and its location. You can find their species flocking to the coast of warm waters between Florida and the Gulf Coast, but they can reach across Mexico and throughout the Caribbean as well. They're a large bird with mostly black feathers, except for the obvious red of their throat pouch that mostly comes into play during mating season. The female species actually has white patches on their chest to differentiate the two genders, so it's a bit like chickens and roosters, although not quite as inflated. The frigate bird are technically seabirds that will only be found near bodies of salt water, but surprisingly their feathers aren't waterproof. They do have webbed feet, but any more time than a few minutes in the ocean will waterlog these feathers and weigh down their magnificent flying skills. But what the frigate birds are most known for is the way they gather food. If you hear a pelican or a seahawk crying out in the distance, chances are the magnificent frigate bird has spread its wings and stolen their prey. Many of their nicknames come from the scavenging tendencies, where they do not seem to fear upsetting other birds who actually worked for that food. They'll chase, call, and even bite at other birds' tail feathers to get them to drop their meal, so you don't want to eat lunch near one of these pesky predators. Living Dead Leaf Malaysia seems to be where leaves and insects collide. But instead of a living leaf like the last bug we looked at, this is the dead leaf mantis, a subspecies of mantis from South Asia. As you might expect, they get their name from the uncanny resemblance to dried up dead leaves. Their intricate patterns can look like dirt or burn marks and show signs of decayed vegetation, probably as a way to discourage both bug eaters and leaf eaters alike. They definitely don't look tasty to us, and unlike the fresher looking leaf bugs, these ones actually focus on movement to help their disguise. If you touch them, they'll sway gently as if they were caught by a light breeze. If threatened, they'll freeze up and act perfectly still. But if all else fails and they're in definite danger, they'll rearrange their position to intimidate. They can use their dark colors and body motions to look like a bigger, more threatening creature. In this video, they look kind of like a giant face, which will probably be a frightening thing to see unprompted in the middle of the forest. As some commenters have said, it works, I'm not going anywhere near this thing. What is a platypus? There are a lot of different creatures in this world, each unique in their own way, but for the most part they all seem to fall into one of five categories, mammals, amphibians, fish, birds, or reptiles. And then of course we have the platypus. Apparently they're too cool for rules like the rest of us because they seem to do whatever they want with their balance of nature. Let's start off with a bit of a deep dive on what makes the platypus so special and keeps them in their place among the animal kingdom. First off, the platypus has a paddle-shaped tail, similar to a beaver. It has a sleek type of furry body like an otter for swimming. And then there are its flat bill and webbed feet like a duck. They even lay leathery eggs like a snake and produce venom unlike any other mammal. It all kind of goes against the definition of what a mammal even is, really but that's what the science community has officially labeled them. They're carnivorous too, so they end up using almost all of their special body parts when hunting. Like many of the world's wildest animals, they can be found predominantly in Australia. It took a while for them to be noticed by the world at large, so when the first stuffed animal of a platypus came out, people assumed it was a joke creature that the stores had sewn together from other animal parts. But nope, it's just a fully natural platypus. The Fishiest Lips Trust us, you don't want to pucker up for these red lips. 
The utterly bizarre, red-lipped batfish can only be found off the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific Ocean, where it's known more for walking instead of swimming. If you want to go diving to see them in the wild, you'll have to swim downward towards 76 meters or even deeper if you're close to the reef edges. They're known as bottom dwellers that can mostly be found by the ocean floor. Although they're related to the batfish, their difference is listed right there in the name. These red lips are the most distinguishing feature they have, and no one is quite sure what it's for. Some theories think it's to tell apart their species among other similar fish, or it could just be a way to attract mates. But if that's not interesting enough for you, there are a few other features of note on this strange little guy. Like how about the built-in flashlight on its head? The part of its unique-looking face that looks a bit like a long nose is the illicium that protrudes from the front of its head. A small section of it does light up, mostly to attract prey in the deepest, darkest waters. And then there's the fact that the fish can't even swim. Although they are fish, their body shape is almost like a frog without the ability to jump. Their fins under their bodies act more like legs that can shift them along the sandy floors. Not everyone has it easy in the wild, but the red-lipped batfish seems to make do with what it's got. A new kind of newt. Nothing says out of this world like a newly found species. We may think we know everything there is about animals in the wild, but new ones continue to pop up from time to time. And in this case, the Tylototriton zeglery is one of the latest, otherwise called Zeigler's crocodile newt, named after Thomas Zeigler. The creature was discovered in northern Vietnam. It was first found in 2013, so there still isn't much information gathered about it. Not many have been found in the wild yet, although there seems to be evidence that the creatures could live in other parts of Vietnam and even up to certain parts of southern China. There's only one female known so far and it measures in at 71 millimeters. The male species, on the other hand, only reaches between 54 to 68 millimeters. Their smaller size is probably what made it so difficult to discover them. They start off as larvae, hatching from an egg where they hopefully manage to find a small pond to survive in. From there, they grow into a tadpole swimming phase that eventually leads them to metamorphosize into the newts we can see here. They won't grow much more after this, so they spend most of their lives traveling from one hiding spot to the next. The Angelic Sea Slug Here's another sea creature that we wouldn't be surprised to have mistaken for something spiritual rather than extraterrestrial. Its name is very fitting as the Sea Angel. But far from anything heavenly, this species is really a type of sea slug that happens to look like a floating angel. Unlike other slugs that we're more familiar with, the sea angel is a graceful swimmer that uses wing-like fins to propel itself like an angel uses its wings. The fact that their bodies are translucent or nearly see-through only adds to the otherworldly aspects that make the sea angel worthy of its name. If you look closely, you can even see their internal organs some of which are a vibrant pink and a glowing orange hue. But if you're familiar with the origins of angels, you'd recognize that they can be powerful creatures that aren't intimidated too easily. In a way, the sea angel is similar in that it's a predator species. They even go after their cousins, the sea snails, that are sometimes referred to as sea butterflies. The angel will either wait in hiding or simply go on the attack to capture the butterfly with specialized appendages. The sea angel has the ability to extract sea butterflies straight out of their shells with the help of two specialized eating appendages called buckle cones. Sure, it may not be too angelic to watch, but they weren't the ones who chose their name. A cow with a twist. Cows are an important part of human life throughout the world, but in India especially, Cows are sacred creatures that are honored with respect for the many gifts they provide for their people. So it's no wonder that a special cow would get special treatment. But unfortunately for this cow, its ceremony happened after it had already died. This calf corpse has a remarkable face that looks almost human-like and definitely not very cow-like. It isn't an unheard of deformity, but was definitely treated like a once-in-a-lifetime event. You see, the calf was born in a village called Uttar Pradesh which many of the local onlookers hailed the creature as an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is an important deity in the common religion of Hinduism, so the event suddenly became a religious affair. The calf only lived for an hour before its body gave out on it, but it was put on display for hundreds to come visit. The owners allowed the body to be put in a glass case with a necklace of garland as people from all over came down to pay their respects. Many of them even made donations and there are supposedly talks of building a temple in its honor. Animal experts say that the occurrence is just a simple anatomy anomaly. Sometimes parts of the body aren't fully developed in the womb, and this could just be the result. 
but you have two types of experts weighing in, the scientific and the spiritual, so the truth might be somewhere in the middle. The strangest thing. They say Australia has some of the most dangerous wildlife, but this discovery on Bondi Beach might not be quite what they meant. Is that some kind of monster octopus from another world? This scene is from Bondi Beach, which was still open to the public despite this new outrageous discovery. People wearing full hazmat suits secured the area but didn't seem to mind all of the people watching. They did try their best at keeping everyone from getting a little too close, meaning the creature could be dangerous. But after some digging and a bit of help from public relations, it came to light that what we're looking at is supposed to be a rift between dimensions. Okay, you've probably figured this out by now, but if you haven't checked your phone for viral videos in a while, you may not have realized that this actually is a promotion for the most recent season of Stranger Things on Netflix. The glowing orange pool and massive tentacles were all a part of the series Upside Down Rifts that popped up across the world. Fans could find one from Sydney to Madrid and several other hotspots in between. It was a sponsored event disguised as a huge marketing campaign and it seems to have worked for fans all over the world. Even for the average pedestrian passing by, this was definitely a commotion worth checking out. Were you fooled? If the shoe fits the bill. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in front of a shoe bill stork, bow and they'll bow back to you. Sometimes referred to as the whale head. The shoebill stork is one of the five most sought-after birds in Africa. They're often mistaken as weathered older storks because of their size, shape, and mostly their gray color. But all shoebill stork adults are gray while their young are a brighter brown. They're mostly found in tropical East Africa near large bodies of freshwater wetlands. Because of their large size, they aren't exactly the speedy type out in the wild. They can generally only fly a distance of 500 meters or close to 1,700 feet but won't go any farther without a big rest break. They try their best to be solitary, meaning they don't care much for intruders or social interactions. Some people have even called them the statue birds because of how still they can be for hours on end. But with the right motions, a proper bow, and maybe a bit of a monkey see, monkey do attitude, you can get these storks to welcome you up close. If you get it wrong though, they may not attack you, but they'll probably pick apart their nests and find somewhere else to live turns out they're pretty picky when it comes to company. A new kind of star. There are the stars in the sky, and then there are the stars that you find on Christmas trees, but this is one star you probably haven't seen before. This creature is called the star-nosed mole because of its uniquely shaped snout, but looking at it up close, is that really a star? It looks almost like a creature from one of the Star Wars films. Maybe it makes sense on a weird-looking fish or bug, but this 22 tentacled patch of nostrils sits right at home on this furry little creature's face. Each of those 22 appendages are actually sensory organs that allow the mole to feel around while digging underground. They work both separately and in tandem with each other, really speeding things up for when the mole is on the hunt. Using their star-shaped nose tendrils, they can gather up to five types of prey in a single second. It's the fastest nose you'll ever find underground. In fact, it feels as if hunting underground is the key aspect of the star-nosed mole, simply because of how good it is at it. Their senses develop at an earlier age than most animals, mostly in their noses, while humans have a fovea that is responsible for our eyesight to work properly. The star-nosed mole has a fovea developed for its sense of touch. In layman's terms, these moles are super sensitive in every sense except for their vision, and hearing works a bit differently underground. But between their main body and their nose, all they need to do is sense the tiniest of movements to know what food is where and how to get it. So you probably shouldn't get between a mole and its nose. A fashionable arachnid. Did this spider just get out of their hair salon? Or maybe it took an arts and crafts class. Maybe, but probably not. What we've been told is that this is a new breed of tarantula from a completely new genus that can be found in Malaysia. It's called the blue tarantula. Spider enthusiasts were ecstatic over the discovery when it first came out, but it soon came to light that the discovery may not have been justified to the law. When the spider was first discovered, it was trapped and escorted out of Malaysia directly to Europe. But Malaysia has strict hunting and trapping laws, and the proper permits did not seem to be in order. The authors of the papers that revealed the blue tarantula to the world claimed that they had no idea about the permit laws. They say they had no reason to believe that the specimens were illegal, which is especially true because no one knew they existed. Mysterious tentacle creature. Is this some kind of a fish? 
No, maybe it's an octopus. A moving tentacle. People were stumped for a while after this TikTok video made the rounds on the internet. It was filmed and angled in Coney Island out of New York, but other than that, details were scarce. Some people claimed it was a submerged alien brought into the open while others think it might have been another promotion for the show Stranger Things. Well, it definitely would have been a great advertisement if only people could figure out what they were looking at, but unfortunately the mystery was solved in due time, or at least partially. A marine animal expert at the Ocean Conservation Trust, one Marcus Williams, said that this creature is certainly some kind of elasmobranch or a type of fish that's mostly cartilage like a shark or a manta ray. It's hard to be certain just from a video on social media, coupled with the fact that only 5% of the entire ocean has reportedly been explored so far. It seems very likely that it could be a brand new aquatic creature that's never been seen until now. But Marcus Williams thinks it's simply an underdeveloped skate, which is a sea creature that's kind of related to the ray family. It still looks more like a moving tentacle creature though, if you ask us. The Friendliest Vampire Would you be scared of something called a vampire squid? Fans of the creature, which are mostly marine biologists, say this squid gets a bad rap from its name alone. Its scientific name literally translates to vampire squid from hell, so it might be hard to blame people for thinking it's a monster. But in reality, this squid is as easygoing as can be. It spends most of its time just floating around and eating decayed leaves, and it's not even a real squid. It's a one-of-a-kind cephalopod that simply has a lot of squid-like features. Its body is composed of two major parts, the mantle and the cloak. The mantle is what we often refer to as the head, the tall, gelatinous part that looks really squishy and houses most of the important organs. The color of the mantle is often dark but may appear either a rusty red or a jet black depending on your angle. Since the water gets darker the deeper you go, the color doesn't really have much of a positive or negative effect in the wild. But unlike actual squids, the vampire squid doesn't have any natural camouflage that can be turned on or off. The cloak part of the squid is actually made up of eight tentacles, kind of like an octopus, but each of those tentacles are stuck together, like a webbed frog's foot. Together they make up and move like a vampire's cloak, hence the name. So if you ever get the chance to see a vampire squid up close, don't fret, you might just be able to make a friend the deepest fireworks show in the world. It looks like the 4th of July might be here under the ocean. The creature had never been seen until the crew aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus found it off Baja, California, Mexico. It's a rare colored version of what's currently known as the firework jelly. The crew was in the middle of gathering routine ocean samples, 1,225 meters below the surface, when they noticed those bright purple and reds of an amazing out-of-this-world jellyfish. The frilled tentacles are thin enough that they appear to be floating on their own, almost like the lingering ashes off of a real firework. When the lights of the ship hit the creature, the colors blew up to be even more mesmerizing. But funny enough, without any lights at all, the creature is practically invisible. What purpose does the color serve if it can't be seen? Perhaps they work as a deterrent to some of the glow in the dark species near the bottom of the sea, like the fearsome anglerfish. It's hard to say for sure, but if you do travel the deeps to see it, be sure to bring along a flashlight. Look inside this fish. Found deep in the seas of the North Pacific Ocean, the Bering Sea and the coast of California is the unusually transparent barrel eye fish. But of the many types of barrel eye fish there are, this specific one is Macropenna microstoma, a genus of the ray fin fish, which is mostly made up of cartilage. You might have noticed, but this strange fish has its eyes visible from inside of a transparent head that's filled with fluid. Its brain can also be seen in its clear domed head. There are two dark brown orb-looking spots on the fish's face that were first thought to have been eyes but are actually the olfactory organs, similar to the nostrils of a nose. And although it may look monstrous up close, it's actually only four inches long. The bare live fish lives in the deeper, darker parts of the ocean but looks up toward the surface to get as much light as it can. Its eyes are glowing green and are able to see sights that we can't, specifically bioluminescent prey like the jellyfish. Their unique eyes are able to distinguish the difference between the bioluminescent light and surface light. The only catch is that the mouth has to be pointed directly at its prey to capture it. That's why the fish is able to move its eyes from looking straight up to looking straight ahead to see its prey. Because this fish lives so far deep in the depths below the surface, only a few people have managed to actually see them in the wild. 
It must be hard when you can accidentally look right through it. The Fabled Blue Dragon of the Sea Glaucus Atlanticus, commonly known as the Blue Glaucus or the Blue Dragon, is a sea slug that floats around the ocean upside down. Its beautiful blue color that can be seen from above the surface is actually the foot of the creature. It's the part of a land snail that drags itself across the ground. The blue dragon is able to blend its blue hues in with the ocean's water. While it looks up toward the surface, the blue glaucus gets its blue color that's normally a very different white. The light from the surface hits its empty color palette and blends in with the blue ocean to make the sea slug naturally camouflaged. The blue dragon likes to flow along the ocean at least until it runs into another blue dragon. The species is capable of mating with any other blue dragon because they're classified as hermaphrodites, meaning they produce both eggs and sperm. When it comes to eating, the favorite dish of the blue dragon is the Portuguese man o' war, which is a species of savannophore or a group of animals that are closely related to jellyfish. The blue dragon not only eats this poisonous savannophore, but steals its poison to store for later. When prompted by a sudden attack, It'll use the poison as a defense. An important fact to know is if you ever encounter the blue dragon washed up on shore is that its poison is still potent even after the creature has died. So please, don't try to touch any washed up creatures unless you know they're safe. Legend of a New Sea Monster Back in 2013, over in Pukahina, New Zealand, a 30-foot sea creature was found washed up on the shore after violent storms hit the area. A video of the creature went viral on the internet and speculations went wild. Was it a whale? A prehistoric sea creature? Or was it some kind of unknown mysterious sea monster? The beached, decrepit creature quickly became a breaking news story around the world. When something is unknown, people tend to be afraid of it. When they're afraid, the creature can become threatening. With this in mind, audiences and theorists began to imagine what this creature is supposed to look like in the wild, and most of those renditions are pretty frightening. The creature's long face with jagged teeth look like they can shred a person to pieces. And then again, the question is still being asked, what is it? A marine mammal expert from the Department of Conservation told the media that based on its fins, it's most likely to be an orca. But that's far from scientific confirmation. So, people are going to keep doing what they do and continue spreading the story of a new sea monster. It is pretty scary looking though. So, were you shocked by these stunning creatures? Do any of them seem like they washed up on Earth one day and just haven't found their way back to wherever they were before? Of course, to these creatures, maybe we're the out-of-the-world monsters that they happen to stumble upon during their normal routines. The planet is big enough for all of us, so maybe we shouldn't be too judgmental on first appearances. 